Our True North political pundits are standing by to weigh in on this. In Toronto, we've got both National Post columnist Robin Urbach and from the Liberal side of things, Matthew Lombardi. And in Regina, Sally Hauser joins us for the NDP. Let me start with you, Robin, if I can. Michael Chong, Chinese-Canadian, 44 years old, independent-minded, something of a renegade, maybe. Your take on his chances. Well, I think he's certainly a principled politician, and I think that's the reason why a lot of policy wonks and maybe small C conservatives really like him. Um, my concern with Michael Chong is that he's not very well known outside of the party. I mean, he was a, a cabinet minister very briefly, and other than that, we haven't really heard all that much about him other than a couple of years ago when he introduced the Reform Act, which aimed to curb uh, leaders' powers within the House of Commons. But other than that, he's been a relatively quiet backbencher. Um, I didn't really hear anything from him today that was particularly dynamic. He talked about balancing budgets and, and cutting taxes, which the Conservatives talked a lot about six months ago, and that didn't really work all that well. So I sort of give his announcement a big yawn today. I'm hoping <laughs> that we hear something a little bit more interesting from him in the coming weeks and months. Matthew Lombardi, your take on this, and I'm curious how you think he plays in the province of Quebec with the resignation that he did 10 years ago. Does that torpedo his chances? Sure, Todd. Uh, certainly Michael Chong is someone known for having an independent streak. Uh, Robin mentioned the Reform Act more recently, but, uh, you know, folks will remember nearly a decade ago, Michael Chong resigned from Stephen Harper's first cabinet on a point of principle over, uh, you know, the issue of Quebec federalism. Um, certainly Michael Chong uh, is someone who's a bit younger. He's the same age as the Prime Minister, so he represents a bit of a generational shift. So it'll remain to be seen uh, how he's perceived all throughout the country. But I, I do believe, like Robin said, he is a bit of a blank slate. He will get the opportunity to define himself, himself especially uh, over the course of a leadership race that's this long. All right, let's bring in the three candidates that are now uh, on uh, the hunt to take over the party. We've got, as we said, Michael Chong, but also Quebec MP Maxime Bernier and Ontario MP Kelly Leach. Sally Hauser, your take on these three, Michael Chong in particular. Well, uh, I was. I thought it was interesting. I, Michael Chong's announcement. Um, I think with the leader or the the candidates you have in the field right now, it's obviously a lot of diversity there, both in terms of regions of the country and style. Uh, Maxime Bernier is very well known, but uh, perhaps not for all the right reasons. Sometime uh, Kelly Leach equally had a problem during the federal election as being the face of the barbaric cultural practices tip line, which uh, whether that hurts her in a general more than it would necessarily in a conservative leadership race remains to be seen. I think what we see with Michael Chong, and I agree that he's, he's less known outside of, say, uh, you know, the, the political wongs of one of which I will include myself in that, in that title there, uh, but despite not being in cabinet, he has done a pretty good job of finding ways where he can, like the Reform Act, um, to raise his profile. Um, and I remember it's, I think, for Canada at large, he represents a kind of a, maybe a kinder, gentler face of the Conservative Party, uh, certainly seems more moderate on social issues. Um, but whether that is a help or a hindrance during an actual Conservative leadership race, uh, that remains to be seen. A last word on this to you, Robin. I just want to get your take on the three that are now running. These are all small fish, small fry in your mind. I think so. I mean, the, the most interesting candidate to me right now is Bernier because he seems to at least carved out what his campaign is going to be about. He seems to be appealing to those conservatives who were perhaps frustrated under the Harper conservatives, um, those who were looking for more of a small government, libertarian-esque sort of government under the Harper conservatives and didn't get that. So he's reaching out to those conservatives and saying, hey, I'm going to be your guy who's going to stand up against auto bailouts and let's talk about Bombardier critically and all of these other issues, whereas I'm not so sure what Kelly Leach is really going to be all about, and likewise for Michael Chong. So right now, he's the interesting candidate to me. Let's switch from the Conservatives to the NDP. We're getting some more clarification on Tom Mulcair saying he will leave politics before the next federal election in 2019, and the NDP setting a time frame for the leadership convention, which will happen in about a year and a half from now in the fall of 2017. Sally, you with the NDP. Start this off. First of all, Tom Mulcair not running again. Your take. 
Well, I think that makes sense. Um, I think it makes sense for him to stay on as interim leader, uh, something he's always been lauded for as being very effective in the House of Commons. And during a leadership race, um, it's a lot of distractions, but you still have to have uh, the business of, of Parliament and question period and everything uh, running smoothly. So I think uh, having Tom stay, um, you know, for, for however long that is during uh, during this process to kind of be a steady hand on the till uh, in the House of Commons is good. Um, I think I'd have to commend the uh, the federal council and the federal executive of the NDP for choosing to have a longer leadership race. Um, I think it gives the NDP enough time to have a really good contest, to get a lot of new memberships signed up, and crucially to raise a lot of money. Leader, I was intimately involved in the last uh, leadership race that uh, Tom Mulcair won in, uh, for the Central Party, and I very much understand the amount of money that goes uh, goes into that. So I think they're doing taking the right moves right now, and it's you know they're dealing with a less than ideal uh, circumstance after the uh, the most recent federal election. Uh, but in my mind, they've made that made the right moves in timing and having Tom sticking around. Matthew, is there a challenge here in finding obvious uh, front runners who can rebuild the NDP? Well, I think there is, Todd, and the reason for that is Prime Minister Trudeau's activist legislative agenda has taken up so much room on the progressive spectrum. And what you'll see here is the NDP really, really is going to need to encourage a large slate of candidates because, you know, fundraising is going to be difficult when you have an interim leader on for, you know, another two years, a year and a half, uh, plus a few more months almost. Um, and a lot of fundraising burden always falls on the party leader. This is a party that's $5 million in debt. And so what you see the NDP's done here, and this is where the issue of Tom Mulcair not running again uh, and the leadership timeline are so related, is they've actually set rules that 25% of all donations to all leadership candidates go to the party. And so that's how they're going to try to uh, uh, remedy that situation. Uh, I, I'm not sure, uh, you know, how many candidates will step forward. We'll see once I think the dust settles on, on the federal election in a few more months. Uh, what's interesting here is they seem to have set the timeline for this leadership in order to avoid the BC election, which the NDP will obviously have a chance of winning and they, they won't want to deplete resources there. Last word on this to you, Robin, your take. I think, I mean, the, the timing of the election for the NDP will come a few months after the Conservatives. I mean, it seems sort of like the sweet spot. They certainly don't want to rush into anything like this, and it allows them time to figure out what this Liberal government is all about and potentially where some weaknesses are. And that's important when considering who will lead the NDP into the next federal election. Um, at the same time, you want to give that leader time for Canadians to acquaint themselves to him or her and figure out what the party is all about because right now it's just a big question mark. We have no idea what this party stands for at this point. So it'll be interesting to see who emerges um, in this leadership race and which direction they then choose to take the party. You three are great. Lots of solid insights there. Robin, Sally and Matthew, thanks for this. Thanks so much, Todd. Thank you. Thank you.